Yo, it's good everyday superpower where we talk game, we talk body language, human dynamics, understanding people inside and out and today I'm going to talk to you about regression. I'm going to talk to you about childlike behavior. I'm going to talk to you about childishness and I'm going to talk to you about assessing it and understanding it in the people around you, okay? This is you know, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to cram into this one because this this really, really, really is a deep one. And uh, this, this, this is a deeper level to what we can speak about uh, as far as like, uh, you know, generally attraction and, um, you know, how people get along and stuff. Because this, this is rooted through so many different factors and variables and each situation is different. But uh, I want to give you some food for thought. I think this will be an interesting one. So hold on through this. Uh, this will link into body language. So I know a lot of you do like body language and nonverbal communication when I talk about that. Uh, but it will also speak on, um, you know, the verbal and general patterns of behavior okay so um where we start with this is going to be crazy i don't really know uh, but i'm going to just sort of throw it out there and see what we can get so with people's behavior yeah with um the communication you have with other people from time to time you will see the child manifest in their psyche right um, with some people more than others and uh, most definitely within particular means of communication so uh, you can see this manifest a whole lot when it comes to um, the sexual side of things and you might think well, well why why is children even a thing when it comes to like sexual communication that's horrible and you know what I don't disagree with you but when you learn to understand it you see it from the Freudian psychological perspective so, I I think Freud was very, very good in his perception and understanding of the relation of the mother and father um, as far as sexual development is concerned. Most definitely, if they're the two, you know, representations of masculine and feminine in your life from day one, and that's you know, whether presence and or absence is in the question, it still creates the dynamic that exists within that person as they develop into grown adults, um, then I think it's incredibly important to learn. Um, Carl Jung, I need to delve a little more so into their works, but as far as uh, Sigmund Freud is concerned and his um, theory of psychoanalysis, I find it incredibly fascinating um, the Oedipus complex, uh, if that's pronounced right, and so forth. I see it manifest. I see it manifest. And I see it, um, you know, without speaking on parenting and father and child and uh, mother and child and that sort of dynamic in relationships. All you need to do is portray a good father figure and you will see it manifest <laughs> most clearly because that woman is looking to you to be a good father anyway for the sake of you looking after your children you know that you would hopefully have together given that the relationship works and that's why you know that's one factor as to why she will be attracted to you because you showcase the abilities of being a good father but she perceiving them qualities in you is also her projecting what she wanted and needed from a father, okay? Uh, the qualities which are highlighted in her life and her psyche, oh, this man will be a good father because of this. It's not like she's been sitting around and reading the, um, you know, the Ten Commandments of what makes a good father. It's because it's her own personal understanding of what makes a good father and the vice versa. You as a man, what makes a good mother, you might perceive that in the women you find attraction to or find more attractive than the next. I do because I love women who cook. I love women who can uh, care for me and look after me in a sense that I don't experience no more because I'm a grown man and my mother you know, it would be wrong for me to seek that from my mother at this moment in time. So it's nice to have that psychological void fulfilled through a woman who can bring that back. The regression can be incredibly comforting, you know. Um, to revert back into a childlike state is uh, fantastic because you are free of the societal and... Um, you know, uh, you're just free of the stress of the world. It's a very pure state of being. <clears throat> and it's just 
pure relief. So you can invoke this into other people by portraying and engaging with them in a means that has them, um, you know, turn to this particular position. When it comes to body language, you will see it manifest through, let's say we're talking on women, yeah? The stroking of the hair, okay? The stroking of the hair, you've got the rubbing of the arm. And we can we can talk about pacifying behaviours and think about the word, yeah, pacifying, a pacifier. A baby puts a pacifier in its mouth to calm it down, all right? It's the same degree. Let's talk about a literal pacifier. When that woman's hard at work, she might lift the edge of her pen to her lip, yeah? indirectly creating that same effect of that pacifier that it once had yeah when we chew gum we're chewing we're relieving stress stress and tension by expressing energy in an indirect means and expressing it out in the world like a pacifier quite potentially chewing on the dummy right so you're relieving yourself of this stress by the relief the touch of the nerve endings gives it sends a signal to your brain saying everything's going to be all right. This feels good. That's why we create these nonverbal, um, you know, um, what's the term? reactions to uh, what we may consciously, if not subconsciously perceive as stressful scenarios. Uh, it might even be outside of our conscious mind why we're stressed, but there might be something we need to do. And we're just there without even knowing, just massaging ourselves. All right. So have a look and consider what might have been in that person's youth that relates to how they're reacting so the touching of the lip might be an engagement of the nerve endings on the lip right it feels good it sends that positive reaction to the brain to fight off that stress but it brings us back in a regressive manner as to when we were pacifying on the dummy and prior to that even more so potentially and maybe the latching on of the teeth of the mother right how do you shut a baby up a baby cries and is in distress because it needs feeding and then you make the attachment, that human connection and voila, the baby is put at ease in that rest and we are still the same people we used to be when we were one years old, five years old, ten years old, we're still the same people, we still have that ingrained within us. If anything, that material is more solidified within ourselves than anything we learn today because our brain was going through the development out of a need of necessity to adapt and survive right so it's still within us and we'll see it manifest with the people around us this is a deep game like i said i can't talk with an incredible amount of depth on this one without going for hours on end this is a deep game so you see the stroking of the hair where do we relay that yes it feels good because it releases um them feel good um endorphins with the slight tug onto the scalp of the head such as when the man brushes his hands through his hair um as a form of stress relief but did the mother rub the hair of the child when she was upset and down in the dumps such as the father was it a means of pacifying via the parenting is it actioning a regressive reaction in that person but you'll see manifest before you there and then the touching of the arm where do they hold the arm where did they hold on is it the wrist such as when you need to cross the road and the parent holds onto the wrist or the arm or rubs onto it to say now now everything's going to be all right it's a deep game this is the regressive element of body language and communication as a whole. You will hear it when you speak to people. Let's say we're engaging in conversation and there comes a bit where I tell a woman and let's, let's say you lead and you uh, sort of emphasize this domineering force and I'm going to look at this from um, both ends. So you, you, you say to this one, go get me a drink. Can you go get me a drink please? That might turn her on. She might like the idea of submitting to you now playing in a way acting in a way this domineering role this dominant role but then she might see the father figure within you that she detests the absent father nobody's ever told me no man has ever told me what i can and can't do before are you gonna say please are you gonna she might start kicking off so this is why you need to assess and understand the background of someone to communicate with them properly we can say look at them, but we can also say instead of looking at them, look at how they were brought up, look at who brought them up, what characteristics did they have, and like yin and yang, they can come together and create this person, okay? Two ones become the two, 
And that's the number two you're speaking to. Why don't you go to the powerful? Why don't you go to the one and the one? And identify them and see how they've formulated this creation. I can continue talking about this, but I think this is going to be one to continue discussing over time. Because as far as the relationship of the parents, in contrast to what that person is attracted to or repulsed by, this is this is something I, I, I always keep an eye on. And I haven't really touched on this channel because it's, it is a deep one. It is a deep one. So I'm going to sign out on that note. Click like and subscribe, all right? Get me monetized, people. Come on. Come on. It's been long enough now. I upload every day. If anything, I've been uploading twice a day. Come on now. Two links down in the description. One will take you through to the catalog of body language. Over 220 non-verbal videos. Not me literally being non-verbal, but me teaching you how to read people through their non-verbal cues. It's a YouTube playlist free of charge. Second to that, Patreon. Attraction and repulsion cues. You'll join me on watching real life first dates. I'll break down what showcases if someone's attracted or repulsed to the other person. You'll take that into the outside world. You won't forget it. I'm signing out.